Over the past decade, the Washington Capitals have been an absolute force in the NHL, able to win one Stanley Cup with Alexander Ovechkin leading the helm, but today, things are a lot different for them. Ovi, at 38 years old, is clearly not the player he used to be. Although he still has a chance of breaking Wayne Gretzky's record, he's going to have to pick it up this season. When it comes to a guy like Nick Backstrom, his best days are behind him, and I think we can officially say that his NHL career is over. And then to cap it all off, we have a guy like John Carlson, who was an absolute beast for the Washington Capitals, an amazing defenseman, but he's now 34 years old. This dominant Washington Capitals core isn't what they used to be, so now it's time to rebuild the Washington Capitals, but we have to trade every single player away here. Ovi's got to get traded, John Carlson's going to have to get traded, Logan Thompson, Charlie Lindgren, all of these guys are going to be traded here. We're going to rebuild the Washington Capitals from scratch, and we're going to turn them into a dynasty. Now, based on what happened when I did this with the Pittsburgh Penguins and how dominant of a team we were, we have to live up to those standards. We're looking for five. We're looking for six Stanley Cups over the next 10 years. We got to build the greatest team of all time. So if we're going to build the greatest team of all time, we got to make sure that we bring in some elite players. And I'm looking at Quentin Byfield here. Ignore the fact that he's on a one-year deal. I guess the roster I'm using forgot to give Quentin Byfield his extension, but we're not going to worry about that. Dylan Strom's off to the LA Kings. We're going to bring in Quentin Byfield here, and he's going to be one of the centerpieces for this team. Ideally, we're going to be able to keep this guy around for all 10 years and there's no doubt about it he's gonna be one of the best players on this team so i'll throw a third round pick into the deal and just like that it's been complete so we're gonna move on to our next deal here and that's gonna be with the san jose sharks william eklund could be an elite playmaker for us he'll probably play on the first line for the majority of his career maybe the second line haven't really figured that out yet but jacob chicken and Simon milano are gonna be sent over we're gonna bring in mario ferraro in the process we do need somebody to play a bit of defense on this team so they're gonna say no to that deal right there i don't want to trade a ton of picks away but hopefully the second round is gonna be enough so i'm gonna add that into the deal they're saying no, but they just want that lucrative seventh round pick. Like, as we know, the seventh round pick is the most lucrative draft pick in NHL 24, and just like that, this deal's been accepted. So it's time to say goodbye to one of the greats here, Alexander Ovechkin, the greatest Washington capital of all time, but now he's going to be headed north. He's off to the Winnipeg Jets. Ivan Miroshnichenko is also going to be included in this deal. We're going to bring in Gabe Velarde, and we're going to bring in Cole Perfetti. We're getting ourselves a great power forward. We're also getting a great sniper. These two guys are going to lead us to success in the future. So with that deal complete, Alexander Ovechkin's no longer on the Washington and capitals it's a sad day. Now, before I continue with any more trades here, a quick announcement. What's going on, guys? Stick on the ice here, and I just have a quick announcement to share. So I've officially launched a channel membership program. So channel memberships are just an additional way of supporting the channel. Now, I want to make this very clear right off the bat here. Becoming a channel member is completely optional. If you don't want to become a member, that's perfectly fine. So what does becoming a channel member entail? So for $2.99 a month, you become a stick on the ice legend. And what that means is you're going to get access to behind the scenes footage and any extra content I make. On top of that, you know all those videos I've made in the past where I have Joe NHLs and Jordan NHLs? Well, what if that was your name right there? So by becoming a channel member, you can see either your name or a name that you create on one of these players right here. I just think this would be a really cool way to show support for my channel members. So the extra content might be Q&As, just random videos I upload, maybe a short vlog from time to time. So if you're interested in becoming a stick on the ice legend, click the join button down below. It'll be right beside the subscribe button. And if you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel. So this is going to be our next big time trade here and this is probably one of our last big time trades the rest of the trades are just gonna be filling out the roster but john carlson's off to the islanders we're getting matt barzell a second third fourth and another third round pick in this deal we're gonna try to get a lot of draft capital they're gonna say no to that deal i'll take out the fourth rounder but i do want to get a handful of picks in this deal and it looks like we're going to be able to all i have to do is give up this sixth round pick right here and matt barzell and all those assets are joining the team after i give up another sixth round pick i guess like these six round picks might be more valuable than the lucrative seventh rounder but at the end of the day we're still getting the deal done so we brought some great playmakers to the team and a couple superstar power forwards but what do we really need a sniper and patrick line you are the newest member of the montreal canadians you got traded about four seconds before i started this video hence why you're on the columbus blue jackets but patrick line you're gonna be acquired for tom wilson in a second round pick here you're gonna be an elite sniper for us no doubt about it all right i have to clarify something sometimes when i do videos like this when i simulate the 2023 2024 season and then i get to the beginning of the 2024 2025 season very 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 stupid things happen like when i say stupid things i mean things like this where jake ottinger for some reason has dropped to medium star potential at 25 years old he has medium star potential so clearly he basically has no trade value whatsoever Logan Thompson, a third round pick's not going to be enough here. But you know what? How about two third rounders? I will definitely give up two third round picks for Jake Ottinger. Now, they said no to two third round picks, but am I surprised? Absolutely not. So here's a second rounder for 2026. We are going to get this deal done, and Jake Ottinger is going to join this team. No question about it. I need the Otter as our goaltender. All right, how about we actually try to fit their trade block here? So I'll prospect a third and second rounder over to the Dallas Stars. Can I please get Jake Ottinger?
manager here. Although we're offering way more trade value, they're still saying no here. Matt Roy, Matt Waugh, do you want to be the difference in this deal? Take out the third rounder and send this package over. They're saying no. I'll include the third round pick. Like at the end of the day, I really don't care how much we have to trade to get Jake Ottinger here. I just really want him on the team. I think we're pretty close when it comes to trade value. So here's a fourth round pick. And I believe this is going to be enough for the Otter. Yeah, that's a steal right there. Jake Ottinger, welcome to the Washington Capitals. So Connor Bedard, I think you need a guy like Pierre-Luc Dubois on your team. Like I think he's going to bring a lot to the team. Like he's going to be a power forward. He's going to bring that to the team. So you're going to give me Frank Nazar, Athanasio, so we can make the contracts work, and a fourth round pick in this deal. They're going to say no to that. I'll take out the fourth rounder. Like at the end of the day, all I really want in this deal is Frank Nazar. Athanasio, we just need you for the contracts, plain and simple. So now that we got Athanasio, it's time to flip him. So Athanasio, you're going to be flipped over to the National Predators along with a third round pick. We're going to bring in Tomasino, and he's going to be one of our bottom six playmakers here. I'm really surprised that third round pick's not enough in this deal. So here's a fifth rounder as well. Like this should be more than enough. So we're going to do a pretty simple trade here. Here's just going to be one for one. Sadin over to the Boston Bruins. We're going to bring in Brandon Carlo. If you know, you know, the dude's a superstar. Like, there's very few defensemen I would take over Brandon Carlo. What can't this man do? So I feel like it was only a matter of time before we pulled off a deal with the Pittsburgh Penguins, our bitter rivals. But you know what? This works out for both sides here. It's going to allow us to get a bit younger. We're going to get a sniper for the bottom six here. This is just a move we have to do. The only thing that sucks is we're out of sixth and seventh round picks. So I have to trade a fifth round pick away here. And a fifth round pick is way too much. But you know what? We're still getting the deal done, so it's not the end of the world. All right, so trading a contract like Majapani is going to be incredibly difficult. So we're just going to use Trade Finder here and it looks like we're going to get a third and fourth round pick from the Columbus Blue Jackets. So we got to dump the TJ Oshie contract and for some reason he fits their trade block. So are you willing to give me a fourth round pick? I guess you are. So I guess we're going to do another deal with the Winnipeg Jets here and one of those fourth rounds we got from the Blue Jackets is going to be sent over so we can bring David Gustafson to the team. We need another power forward for the bottom six. Now we're not done with the bottom six yet because you know what else we need? A sniper and Alexander Holtz. I believe you can be that guy for us. The fact that that package right there wasn't enough is ridiculous and the fact that I have to throw a fourth rounder in this deal is just just beyond insane but you know what i really want holtz on the team so it turns out i've traded for too many snipers but what we could use is a playmaker and yes we're cocking yemi i know 4.8 is gonna be very expensive for a bottom six guy but we gotta reach the salary cap floor here so by bringing you to the team it's gonna help us reach the salary cap floor but we're still gonna be a little ways away from that so i believe this is gonna be the final trade we make with the blue jack it's gonna be one for one lapierre for vronkov vronkov's gonna be a great power forward you're really telling me we can't get this deal done like i really have to include this fourth round pick if i don't include this fourth round pick it just doesn't happen all right, so Martin Ferrivari, Carmick, Michael, you're two of the final pieces we have to trade away here, and you're going to be sent over to the Buffalo Sabres. Matias Samson, I like your contract. 4.4 million, that's going to help us reach the salary cap floor. So I think we have two more trades to make after this one, but the next one's going to have us picking up a Lundqvist from the Philadelphia Flyers. We're also getting a fourth round pick. Never mind, no we aren't. I can't believe I couldn't get any draft picks back. I mean, I probably could have got a seventh rounder or something, but I didn't want to go through the effort of adding that seventh round pick. Now I completely forgot we still had Logan Thompson on this team. So yeah, he's going to get shipped out here along with Taylor Radish and Dowd. We're going to bring in Kale Flurry. He can play some third pairing minutes for us. We're also going to get a third, fourth, and another third round pick. So if we can get all these draft picks, that's going to be ideal for us. Now I believe this is going to be the final trade we make. It's going to be Charlie Lindgren and a third round pick over to the Detroit Red Wings for Billy Huso. And by completing this deal right here, we're officially over the salary cap floor and we trade the entire team away. All right, I take it back. One more trade. Mark Edward Vlasic, welcome to the Washington Capitals. Now, after all of those moves right here, it's extension time. Velarde, you're going to be the first guy getting a deal here. I'm hoping to lock you down for eight years. I don't think we're actually going to do that here. It might be a five-year deal. We'll do five years of 4.5 million. That's going to be a really cheap contract for a majority of the rebuild. It's over 50% for sure. Holtz, if you're playing bottom six minutes, I don't want to sign you for too much here, but 2.3 million, I think that's a pretty fair deal. For Onkoff, you have a pretty solid line fit here, so I'd love to keep you around as well. We're going to do five years at 2.5 million. Actually, let's make that 2.6 just so I can make sure you join the team. But the most important piece by far is going to be the otter and of course that has to be an eight-year deal he's looking for 9.5 million but i know for a fact we can get him for less than that how about we do 8.8 .8 for the next eight years that's a steal for jake ottinger so 8.8 .8 for the otter an absolute beautiful deal for us we got our superstar goaltender so after all the moves we made this is what the team's looking like matt barzell quentin byfield and patrick line on the first line velarde william eklund and cole perfetti on the second the bottom six is not looking great by any means here and the defense is actually pretty mid mario ferraro and brandon carlo you can only do so much here i mean our defense isn't bad it's just not really good like we have no superstars here that can lead the way when it comes to defensive depth though i do believe we're in a good spot and we got a great goaltender jake ottinger billy huso is going to be backing him up we might be able to surprise some teams but at the end of the day the offense is going to be our weakness we're just not a good enough offensive team so we'll go ahead and simulate to the trade deadline and see how the team's looking so we're at the trade deadline right now and things actually aren't that bad for the washington capitals we're currently sitting ninth in the entire league a 34 21 
seven record based on how the season started for this team based on how the season started for this team we're actually doing better than i thought like our start was absolutely abysmal here but you know what the boys have looked good so far matt barzell is going to lead the way with 60 points then you got william eklund 59 velarde 54 patrick line 52 so we're definitely scoring goals and you'll love to see it when it comes to goaltending from the otter 30 wins two shots a 908 and a 294 and he's back up to mediumly potential i have no clue how that works but you know what we capitalize on the fact that his potential dropped and it's definitely working out for this team now i'm going to be honest it's season number one here we traded 90 percent of our draft picks we really don't have that many assets left so we're not going to make any moves here we're just going to simulate the rest of the season so the washington capitals had a strong finish to the season here we're going to be finishing eighth in the entire league at the 44 29 and 9 record as long as this team's making the playoffs i'm going to be happy because every single player on this team is going to be better for next season william eklund he's going to be better matt barzell he's going to be better velarde going to be better patrick line is going to be better cole perfetti quentin byfield all these guys are going to be better next season and speaking of quentin byfield we probably should give him an extension right now jake ottinger 37 wins four shots a 908 and a 296 i will show off the playoff bracket real quick here we're going to be taking on the new york rangers in the first round but the main goal right now re-signing quentin byfield so quentin byfield's deal is going to be an absolute steal it's going to be seven million dollars for the next eight years here that's definitely a deal i can work with there's a couple other guys looking for deals right now david gustafson is going to be one of them how about we do 1.35 for the next three years and then tom Cino, i'd like to keep you around for pretty cheap here but i think we're just going to do a two-year deal at 1.75 million so we got the postseason in front of us right here we're taking on the new york rangers first obviously the rangers are going to be heavily favored in this series but you know what the washington capitals have a lot of grit here and they're looking to fly and you know what that's exactly what we're doing a 3-0 series lead can we close this out in a sweep over the rangers yeah washington's legit now a ton of time has passed like we're in the year 2025 but i guess some things never change who do we get to match up against in the second round our biggest rival in the pittsburgh penguins so the washington capitals might have looked great against the rangers but that could change real quick we have the pittsburgh penguins to take on next and you know what things continue to look good for us we're winning two of the first three games can we make it three straight wins yes we can are we making it to the conference finals in year number one that would be great unfortunately we're going to be allowing nine goals in game number five that can't happen here but we are going to close out in game six so we moved on to the conference finals and now we get to take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. There is no way the Washington Capitals are making it to the Stanley Cup final in year number one here. So far, the series has been split between the Tampa Bay Lightning and Washington Capitals. Game five is going to be a massive one. We're going to be taking that. No way we make it to the Stanley Cup final here. We got to go to game seven first. I just did not expect this Washington Capitals team to be as good as they were. But you know what? We got game seven. So here we go. Game seven between the Washington Capitals and Tampa Bay Lightning. It's a scoreless first period. Moving into the second period, we're going to be exchanging goals. Cole Perfetti is picking up one. Gergensen is going to be picking up one. And as we know, I'm allowed to jump into one game per series. Game seven. Game's tied entering the third period. This is the game I have to jump into. So here we go. The Washington Capitals and Tampa Bay Lightning. We have the third period in front of us here. We've got to play some good defense. It's been a couple of days since that last disastrous performance but you know what i'm ready to lock in so we're going to be drawing a penalty pretty early in this period we got 13 minutes left but hold on we got a bit of a two-on-one we're going to make that a two-on-zero here no way vasilevsky just saved that you can't give up on the play there if i didn't give up on that play we probably would have had a goal but ain't no way vasilevsky's making that massive save here it's still a tie game so we got ourselves a power play normally alexander ovechkin would be out in this situation but as we know he's not on the washington capitals anymore so we need to find somebody else that can produce so here we go, Quentin Byfield turning on the Jets here. He's getting by one defenseman. He's going to rip that. He was trying to go short side on Vasilevsky, but he's making the big stop. So yes, we're cocking Yemi. I have no clue why you're manning the power play, but I guess you're out here. And we're going to let you cook because you know what? You're not looking too bad right now. You create a bunch of space here, but you couldn't get the shot off in time. But here we go. Quentin Byfield's been sprung for a breakaway and he's going to capitalize. What a great pass from Kalkin Yemi. I believe he started that play right there. But Quentin Byfield, what a great finish. Vasilevsky has been performing great so far. And you know what? You were finally able to beat him. Quentin Byfield just had way too much space here. I don't know why the defense was giving him that much room. But since they did, he's going to make them pay. So we're 12 minutes away from making it to the Stanley Cup final. The Washington Capitals, who were eighth in the entire league, nobody had them making it to the Stanley Cup final. But here we are. So we got four minutes left in this game it's just defense 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 right now if we can play good defense we're going to be coming out on top and we'll move on to the stanley cup final that was unfortunate i saw that play happening from a mile away and i still couldn't stop it tampa bay is going to be tying this game up more than likely we're off to overtime 
So here we go. We got 40 seconds left, and the puck's in the offensive zone. I'm going to try to throw that towards the net, but it's not going to work out for us. Carlo versus Jake Getzel. Two great players, but Carlo's going to finish that up. He's going to put Jake Getzel to the ground, and we're going to be sprung for a bit of a breakaway. Tomasino, can he capitalize here? He's dropping it back, but Gustafson can't capitalize. I planned on dropping that back the second I saw Gustafson. I knew that's who was going to be taking the shot. So Tomasino, you're getting another chance. You're not too much time left. He's going to drive towards the front of the net. No way he doesn't score that goal that was in the back of the net but it went off the defenseman that is such a tough break Tomasino had the game on his stick he is scoring this goal but Ryan McDonough is going to be right there so it's a tie game we're moving into overtime I don't care if the Washington Capitals have outplayed the Tampa Bay Lightning the next goal is going to be sending their team to the Stanley Cup final Filardi with a nice move into the offensive zone. He's going to send across. William Eklund can't capitalize. He's going to try to throw that into the back net. He was looking for a deflection there. You know what? We still have the puck in the offensive zone here. We're gaining control of it. And I think this is David Gustafson. He's cooked towards the front of the net. A diving play. He's not going to be able to capitalize. Holtz is throwing it towards the front of the net. Let's just keep throwing the puck on net here. And what's going on here? JJ Moser's picking up an interference penalty. We're back on the power play. There was a massive cluster in front of the net. I couldn't tell you what was going on there. But we're drawing an interference penalty and that's exactly what we're looking for here. So it's win this face off back and just have Lundqvist teed up into the back of the net. He had a great chance there. We got the full pressure meter max out. Let's throw another shot towards the front of the net. Cocking is going to pick it up, drop it back. Lundqvist, another opportunity. Vasilevsky's making that save. Let's just keep taking these point shots. Quinton Byfield, Vasilevsky's tired. You got to capitalize on that. You're going to get past one defenseman and you're going to roof it on Vasilevsky. We're off to the Stanley Cup final. A big goal from Quinton Byfield. He's picking up the two biggest goals in this game and now we're off to that Stanley Cup final. The Stanley Cup final the Washington Capitals haven't been there for a long time but with their new core they're making it there in year number one Quinton Byfield picking up two massive goals superstar difficulty by the way I actually remember to put it on superstar difficulty so we've made to the Stanley Cup final in year number one. I didn't think this would even be possible, but here we are. The Washington Capitals taking on the Edmonton Oilers. It's no surprise that the Edmonton Oilers are the clear favorite. They're 12-2 and in the postseason so far. Washington better bring their A game. So the Washington Capitals taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton's the clear favorite. I could jump into game number four here, but you know what? I'm not even going to bother. We're down 3-0 in the series. It's a sweep for the Edmonton Oilers. 12-2 and in the postseason. That team is loaded. Like, I'm going to be honest, I knew heading into this matchup we weren't beating the Edmonton Oilers. Like, that team is absolutely stacked, and they're my favorite to win the Stanley Cup next season. And what makes them even tougher is they finally got rid of Cody Ceci. Simply by getting rid of Cody Ceci, you got a million times better. The Edmonton Oilers are bringing home the Stanley Cup, and there is no doubt in my mind that they're not going to do so. Jake Ottinger, you have good numbers. We're going to ignore the goals against, because that was very skewed after what happened in the Stanley Cup final. Like, we were just dominated. But you know what? We made it to the Stanley Cup final year number one a lot of the young players are going to get better on this team we're headed in the right direction that's for sure so with our first round pick we did get a good player we got a medium top four potential defenseman but you know what once we got later in the draft here i'm talking the third and fourth round there's not that great of prospects available hopefully we can turn these two draft picks into a second rounder and maybe something else i don't really want that prospect they were offering so maybe i can get a fifth rounder i'll take a second and fifth rounder for sure so when it comes to the resign phase every single player is going to be walking here when it comes to all of our goaltenders they're going to be walking as well unless we we can sign somebody to a cheap deal. Billy Huso will definitely do this. An 84 overall, and I'm going to give you 900k. That's a steal. So we have a decent amount of money to work with here when it comes to extensions. Of course, the first guy we got locked down long term here is going to be William Eklund. But if I do an eight year deal, he's looking for 10.1 million dollars. Now, 10.1 million dollars, I definitely don't want to do that. But I could do 8.8 .8 for the next eight years. And I feel like that's pretty fair for you. So 8.8 .8 for William Eklund. Then when it comes to Patrick Line, what's he going to be looking for? We can make this happen. So how about we do five years at 5.9 million? Then we're going to be saving a bunch of money with you and then that'll keep you on the team till you're 32 years old and then by that time i think you'll start regressing mario ferraro this is a bit of a tougher one like do i really want to pay you this amount of money but 5.5 for the next five years when you're a top pairing defenseman for us isn't the end of the world all right so i think we're gonna do a one-year deal with brain mcnab here to play in our third pairing it's gonna be 5.2 million now that might seem like a lot here but we are going to make a move to free up some cap space. And what exactly is that trade going to be? Vlasic and a seventh round pick over to the Calgary Flames. By making this deal, we free up $7 million. 
And because we have that extra $7 million, we can make a play for Blake Wheeler, $5 million for one season. So taking a quick look at this team, we're looking amazing. Quentin Byfield's up to an 88 overall. Alexander Holtz, I'm going to be honest, I did not expect for you to play second line minutes, but here you are sitting at 85 overall, so you got to play second line minutes. Cole Perfetti moving down to the third line. You know what? This team's looking really good right now. When it comes to the defense, plus two, plus one, plus one, you'll love to see it. And on top of everyone being above an 80 overall, we have 85 Mario Ferraro. Yeah, this team's looking pretty solid. And then when it comes to goal tending, Jake Ottinger, still haven't figured out how we got you. Like, honestly, it makes absolutely no sense. But the fact that you dropped a medium star potential and I was able to secure you, I'll definitely take that any day of the week. So we've made it to the trade deadline once again, and the Washington Capitals are in a pretty familiar spot, ninth in the entire league with a 36, 23, and 4 record. As long as we have a record like this at the trade deadline, I'm going to be perfectly fine with this team. The defense could use a bit of an upgrade here, and I think that's what we might try to do. Matt Barzell has been an absolute superstar for us. 83 points here at the trade deadline. William Eklund's got 78. Holt's 72 points. Good thing we moved this man up to the second line. Patrick Line, Quinton Byfield, Velarde. Yeah, these guys are locked in. But it's pretty clear that defense is the one thing holding this team back. Jake Ottinger, 30 wins, one shot, a 905 and a 301. If we bring in one superstar defenseman, this team's set for a Stanley Cup. So in the 2024 draft, the Dallas Stars drafted Koivlev here. He's got medium lead potential, 84 overall already, and I think he could be a top performer for us. Like, we would keep this guy around long term and he'd be a superstar defenseman for us. So Kale Fleury, a first round pick for 2027 and a second round pick for 2026. That's not going to be enough right there. But you know what? I think there's one man that can make the difference. One goaltender, not named Jake Ottinger, but Vili Huso. Because he's got quite a bit of trade value. Like he's an 84 overall and he's getting paid basically nothing. So if you give me Fran Sos, 81 overall, that's good enough to be the backup here. I think that's enough to make the difference. So I'm going to send that package over. They're saying no. Do I want to do two first round picks here? Like at the end of the day, we're going to be getting a guy that was drafted fourth overall. So I think it's worth giving up two first round picks. I'm going to send that over. They're saying no. Do I want to give up a second round pick as well? Not really, but I'm still going to do it. So we're going to get this deal done. It's a massive one for the Washington Capitals, but I think we're right for a Stanley Cup now. So with the addition of Koivalev to the team, plus three, plus two, and plus two when it comes to our defensive pairings, yeah, we're definitely in a better spot. No question about it. With the season wrapping up, we're going to see the Washington Capitals sitting seventh in the entire league, a 47, 30, and five record. The offense is looking really good here, and the defense, pretty similar to what it was before the trade deadline. So our addition really didn't make that much of a difference. But at the end of the day, with the offense looking this good, I don't think it really matters how bad our defense is. Matthew Barzell, 106 points here. Ekman's picking up 98. Holtz is picking up 92 points. Never would have expected that. And then the Otter, he's doing his normal thing. 40 wins, one shot, a 903 and a 307. I'm hoping you're going to turn the goals against around when it comes to the postseason because we do need to be better defensively. But that's not just on you. That's on the defense. That's on the forwards when it comes to them playing defense. Our team just has to be better defensively. But I guess we're going to find out if we can step it up real quick here. We got the New Jersey Devils in the first round. So this is going to be a good battle against the New Jersey Devils. They're a great team, but we made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final last season. So I definitely wouldn't bet against us. We had ourselves a 2-1 series lead, but unfortunately we're going to be dropping game number four here. As long as we're not dropping back-to-back -back games, we're going to be in a good spot. We're one game away from making it to the second round here, and we're going to close it out here in game number six. A shutout from the Otter, that's what I'm looking for. But we're certainly going to have our hands full moving into the second round here, as we have to take on one of the best teams in the entire league in the New York Rangers. They're coming off a sweep over the Columbus Blue Jackets, but they haven't seen a team like Washington yet. Now we looked all right against the New Jersey Devils, but the New York Rangers are a completely different story. This team's a lot better. We've won back-to-back -back games here, and so far the defense has been really good. And you know what? We keep on winning games here. Why not win four in a row and move on to the conference finals? We're going to be allowing six goals in game number five. That's not really ideal here. We got a lock-in in game number six, and this team's off to the conference finals for the second year in a row. So we made it to the conference finals for the second year in a row we get to take on the Buffalo Sabres in this matchup. We're four games away from making it back to the Stanley Cup final, but it's definitely going to be another tough task because I think we already know who's making the Stanley Cup final. It's going to be the Edmonton Oilers, isn't it? But we can't get too far ahead of ourselves here. we got to take it one game at a time against the Buffalo Sabres. We're winning game one, but we're immediately dropping two games after that. We can't be losing three straight games here. That was a big game for a win. As long as we can win back-to-back -back games here, we're going to be in a great spot. Can we close it out and move on to the Stanley Cup final? Yes, we can. And who would have seen this coming? The Edmonton Oilers up next. Washington's toughest task by far. We've got to come out flying. We're winning two of the first three games. That's massive for us. Game number four is also going to be a big one, but unfortunately, we're going to be dropping that one. It's a best of three from here on out. This next win's going to be a big one, and it looks like it's going to be going to the Edmonton Oilers. We got game six elimination. I might have to jump into this matchup. So we got ourselves game six elimination between the Edmonton Oilers and Washington Capitals, and Edmonton's coming out flying in the first period. Bouchard and Evander Kane are both picking up goals here. In the second, they're going to keep on piling on, picking up another two goals. We're down four. 4 nothing entering the third period. I've made comebacks like this before and I'm ready to do it again. I also decided to make my camera a bit smaller because I didn't realize how big it was on the screen. Like I had two separate cameras.
cameras one for gameplay and then one for just straight yapping and yeah i realized i had to lower okay that is tough that is so incredibly tough right there i was too busy yapping to pay attention to what was going on but now we're down five nothing but as i was saying the gameplay camera was always smaller than the yapping camera but i think i need to make it a bit smaller but yeah we're down five nothing now probably should pay a bit more attention no, but real talk, where was the defense there? They were doing absolutely nothing. But hey, Edmonton's defense is doing nothing now. We're back to a four-goal game. So that was a big-time goal from the Washington Capitals there, making it a four-goal game once again here. But we still have to pick up another four goals. Yeah, we're a long ways away from getting back into this game. Every time McDavid touches the puck, I get scared. Like, that should have been a goal right there. But you know what? We got lucky there, and it wasn't. We're moving the puck up the ice here. And you know what? We're absolutely cooking here. We had a great opportunity. Patrick Laine, let's see if you can get something going here. They're giving you a bit of space. And honestly, I don't know why they're giving Patrick Laine space like that. He could capitalize on that. No question about it. Oh, we got the offensive legend in Brandon Carlo bringing the puck into the zone here. You know if Brandon Carlo's got the puck, he's going to cook up something special. And way to keep it in the zone right there. No, but real talk, that play starts with Brandon Carlo. If he doesn't keep that puck in the zone, we don't score that goal. And that is a massive goal right there, cutting it to a three-goal deficit, and we still got time. So it's a three-goal deficit with 10 minutes left in this game. We were down 5 nothing at one point, but we've slowly crawled back into this game. And Carlo is bringing the puck into the offensive zone. Can we get another goal here? Quinton Byfield in to the back of the net two goal game just like that no real talk brandon carlo might be one of the greatest players of all time a defensive defenseman that can always produce offensively for you bro's an absolute legend and just like that we gave Connor mcdavid an opportunity to score and i put it in the back of my own net but luckily it's goaltender interference that should not be goaltender interference, but you know what? We will take it there. I mean, never mind. Connor McDavid definitely took out our goaltender. So yeah, we got lucky there. So here goes one of our goal scorers and Quinton Byfield bringing the puck into the zone here. He's going to rip that towards the net. Stuart Skinner's going to play that one. That was a very interesting move here, but hey, it's working out for them. He's now Connor McDavid's flying. Connor McDavid, what are you doing? Picking up a penalty right here. We're heading to the power play. We have lots of time left in this game, and now we have a power play. Yeah, we're going to make this close game. We're going to be picking up our fourth goal of the game here, and then we're going to tie it up a couple minutes later. Cole Perfetti, he's got a breakaway. He's breaking into the zone here. I told you, Cole Perfetti's picking up a goal here. We scored back to back to back to back goals here. It's a one goal game and we got lots of time left. William Eklund, if you hold into this puck long enough, we're gonna have a goal right there. But Stuart Skinner making a huge save on Velarde. We almost tied this game up. Quentin Byfield with the steal in the neutral zone. He's battling towards the front. A loose puck. Samuelson couldn't bury it in the back of the net here. We just gotta make sure we don't give up a breakaway. So we got three minutes left in the game here. The Washington Capitals are trailing by one goal but Patrick Line is going to draw a penalty here that's huge for us Matthias Ekholm you're absolutely lacking right there giving us another opportunity on the power play it's a one goal game we're really about to tie this one up. So Quinton Byfield is going to be drawing another penalty here in the neutral zone. A 5 on 3 with 2 minutes left in the game. If we don't win this game, then it's rigged. So here we go. Blake Wheeler breaking into the zone here. We're going to kick it back to one of our defensemen. Never mind, that's Holtz. Holtz is getting enough space here where he can go to work. He's throwing that towards the net. Stuart Skinner is making a big time save there. He's keeping them in this game. But hold on, we're keeping the puck in the offensive zone here, but they're going to find a way to get it out. Oh, here we go. Patrick Line, more than enough space here. He's ripping that towards the net. We have a loose puck. And Gabe Velarde's picking up an interference penalty. You gotta be kidding me. We just put that into the back of the net. Why see the captain? It doesn't matter. But that is a tough look for us. We just tied this game up, but seconds before Gabe Velarde's picking up a penalty, you hate to see it. Okay, we got 40 seconds left here. We got to focus up. We can't be turning the puck over behind the net, but that's exactly what we're doing. Quinn Byfield, throw it towards the net here. Can we get an opportunity? We're throwing that one on net. Stuart Skinner making another big save here. We got to keep on putting on the pressure. Lundquist, I guess we're going to have to rely on you. You're bringing the puck into the zone here. You're circling back. Throw that towards the net. It was just wide. Cole Perfetti, you're going to work your way in. You're going to rip that towards the net. Stuart Skinner, another massive save. 13 seconds left in this game. It should be tied right now. The Matt Barzell, you gotta win this face-off here. It's the biggest face-off of the game, and unfortunately, you're gonna be losing that one. Drysdale's bringing the puck out, but they got themselves a bit of a breakaway with Hyman. We only have a couple seconds left in the period here. Let's just break it out to Koivlev. Let's see if he can turn on the Jets here. He's got a bit of space. He's gonna throw that towards the net. Stuart Skinner made the save. Stuart Skinner made that save in the final seconds of this game. We're gonna be losing 5-4 to four after making a four-goal comeback. That one hurt. That one hurt right there. We had one final opportunity, but Stuart Skinner made the save of the game. 
that's a tough one to process like we outplayed the edmonton oilers no question about it like we outshot them 19 to 9 they scored early in that third period koivlev almost scored there i gotta watch the replay like he burned right past cody cc san jose sharks legend right there koivlev had the perfect chance to end it with one second left he's gonna get this shot towards the net and it's just going off the top of Stuart skinner's pad i think if i delayed for one second later we would have scored that but then again if i delayed for one second later then time runs out here that is a tough one so we're going to be losing in the stanley cup final i mean i'm happy i jumped into that game but i should have paid attention early on in the third period like this was seven seconds into the period here Connor mcdavid over to ryan nugent hopkins nugent hopkins back to mcdavid they were just playing a bit of give and go right there nothing you can do on top of that we had to kill a penalty too yeah, nothing was going our way on this play right here. To think, if I didn't shrink my face cam from this to this, I wouldn't have been yapping about that at the beginning of the third period. And you know what? We probably wouldn't have allowed that goal. That's an incredibly tough one to process. So we're going to pull off a deal here with the Detroit Red Wings because I think this is going to be a massive year for us when it comes to the draft. We're going to pick up the 79th overall pick as well as another 7th rounder. Now the reason I made that deal, there's a great prospect around the 79 overall range. This goaltender right here potentially having high elite potential. We're going to make this selection right here and that's exactly what we're getting. A high elite potential goaltender, but we're not done yet. Now we're not done yet because now we're going to trade for the 85th overall pick and i think we're going to begin another great goaltender here because without a doubt right here a mediumly potential goaltender projected 90th but we're going to get him 85th here that's another great selection but what if i told you there's still another great goaltender out here. So with our next deal, the 152nd overall, as well as a future sixth round pick is going to be sent over to the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're getting the 116th overall. And with the 116th overall pick, we're going to pray that this guy right here is also a highly potential goaltender. Fringe starter. Not what I was going for here. But you know what? We got two amazing goaltenders in this draft. I'll take it. So when it comes to the re-sign phase, two pieces are going to be lost here, but I can live with it. Rain McNabb and Blake Wheeler. So we have a couple important pieces that need extensions here. It's going to start with Brandon Carlo. And what's he going to be looking for an absolutely amazing deal no doubt in my mind we're going to be locking him down long term 4.6 for the next five an absolute superstar like him is getting the bag he deserves when it comes to lundquist i'd like to lock him down for fairly cheap here but 4.9 million is definitely not the move especially if you're playing third pairing minutes so we're going to let you walk here we do have your rfa rights so we'll just play out your contract for this season then let you walk thomasino i'm not going to lie you don't fit on the bottom six here you just don't have a good fit there so don't be surprised if you're traded same with frank nazar like he doesn't have the greatest fit either but at this price tag we we can make it work like 1.1 million for the next eight years why would i say no to that so we lost two players to free agency that means we have to bring two players in jamie alexiak 5.5 for one season that's a decent enough deal for us so i was talking about how thomas soon doesn't have the greatest fit with this team but you know who does maverick bork apparently he has a perfect fit on the third line here so we're going to bring him in here and have him play some third line minutes well this is a pretty easy deal to get done eight years at 1.1 million maverick bork you're always signing amazing contracts with the team now we've made to back-to-back -back stanley cup finals with this team right here so clearly we can win games the problem is we can't win the big time games back-to-back -back seasons now where we fall into the edmonton oilers i believe we have a real good team here and honestly i just think we have to wait until edmonton falls apart because it's only a matter of time before that team loses a handful of their important pieces and once they do they won't be able to stop washington but until then we're gonna have some great battles now we still have to deal with this nonsense right here the edmonton oilers first in the entire league 47 wins but the washington capitals have 40 right now they're looking to lead as well but edmonton's just slightly better than us i I mean seven wins is actually a pretty big margin here so yeah they're significantly better but we're getting close to the top of the league the, the washington capitals continue to look amazing here matt barzell 84 points patrick line 78 william eklund 71 byfield's got 62 holtz a massive step back from what you did last season but you're still looking great velarde not too bad the bottom six could use a bit of an upgrade though koivalev though has been that guy this season plus 32 and he's got 21 points mario ferraro 21 points the defense is clearly good but that third line does need a bit of work and i can only assume the team looking to elite so is jake ottinger 33 wins one shot a 903 and a 303 these aren't the numbers i'm looking for like plain and simple i need better than a 303 but at the end of the day that might be my fault i haven't surrounded you with a good enough team all right so after scouring the trade block here and getting deals like this where i don't want to give up every single pick we have also i don't really want zach Renski on the team we're not going to make any deals here we're just going to get ready for the postseason and get ready to make it to the stanley cup final where we'll take on the edmonton oilers for the third year in a row so we have quite the battle on our hands the edmonton oilers 
first in the entire league. The Washington Capitals, second in the entire league. Two of the best teams in the entire league. We know for a fact they're going to match up in the Stanley Cup final. But who's going to come out on top? We're not too sure yet. Matt Barzell, another amazing season. The top six is incredible here. Just look at the plus minuses. When it comes to the third line and fourth line, we're not really going to talk about that. But you know what? Those guys held it down. When it comes to goaltending, Jake Onger stepped it up big time here. 44 wins, two shots, a 9-11 and a 280. For him to completely turn these numbers around, he's been posting like a 930 and a 220 since. So since the deadline, Jake Ottinger's been the best goaltender in the entire league. He's not looking to slow down anytime soon. We got the New York Islanders in the first round. We already know who I want to take on the cup final. Like, I'll keep it one scundo here. I'm looking past the first round. I'm looking past the second round. Even the conference finals. I'm looking directly towards the Stanley Cup final because I know for a fact we're going to make it there. We got 3-1 series lead and now we're going to cap it off in five games. So we got past the Islanders in a five game series. The Winnipeg Jets got past the Calgary Flames in a six game series. The way things are looking right now, we're on pace for another rematch. So the New Jersey Devils, I'm assuming, are gonna be a tougher task than the Islanders. They're gonna be taking game one. As long as we don't lose three straight here, yeah, things aren't looking good. Things are not looking good here. We're down 3-0 against the New Jersey Devils. I'm probably gonna have to jump into one of these games. I mean, I can almost guarantee I'm going to have to jump into one of them. So here we go, moving into game number four here. If it's an absolute blowout in game number four, I probably won't jump into it. But you know what? I know it's not going to be a blowout. Maverick Bork's picking up the first goal of the game. In the second period, it's going to be a scoreless one. We're going to take the risk, and I'm going to simulate the third period here. And what's going to be happening? We're going to be winning 3 nothing. I was so concerned. You might be asking, why didn't I just slowly simulate the third period? Because why would I do that? We got to take risks around here. So we're moving into game number five. We have to win four straight games in order to win this series. But you know what? I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that. It's a tie game right now. Moving into the third period, it's time for me to lock in. So we have the camera already set to the right size here. So we're not going to be allowing a goal in the first seven seconds. But we do have a power play to start off the third period here. So we might as well go to work early. So here we go, Quinton Byfield. He's scored a lot of big time goals so far. He's going to get checked, but he's holding onto the puck here. We're going to drop it back to Holtz. Holtz back over to Quinton Byfield, and we're going to let this man go to work. He's going to drive towards the net. He's going to try to bank it off the goaltender there. Didn't quite work. Throw it right back down to Quinton Byfield. Go short side. The goaltender was ready for it. But you know what? Matt Barzell's got the puck. Let's try to throw that back to Quinton Byfield. Psych, we're going to throw it up to Holtz, and we're going to let him go to work here. He's throwing something towards the net, but the goaltender's making the big save. Markstrom's doing his thing right now. Oh, a little give and go. Quinton Byfield and Matt Barzell, but we can't capitalize. But look at Patrick Line making the big time play here to keep the puck into the zone. But Markstrom, yet again, he's making a big save. Now, so far, our breakouts have actually looked really good this game. So if we can spring one of our guys for a breakaway, that would be ideal here. But you know what? That actually might happen. Quinton Byfield, if he can get past the defense, he's going to be in a great spot here. He's going to circle back. I was going to try to find somebody on the doorstep, but that's actually not the case here. Koivalev, how about you take that shot? Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. That was bad defense by me. Yeah, I'm putting this team in a bad spot, but you know what? I'll take the blame on that one, but we'll bounce back real quick. Like, I just can't be giving up a goal in that position, but you know what? We have a lot of big-time players on this team, and you know what big-time players do? They make big-time plays. Like, William Eklund, watch him score this goal right here. Never mind, Holtz is turning it over. So, Brandon Carlo, you got the puck now. It's time for you to go to work. Who are we going to pass it over to? William Eklund. Hey, I was saying William Eklund was going to pick up that goal, but he's actually not going to be because Holtz is going to get by the defense here. A little bit of a give and go right there. I mean, it technically wasn't a give and go whatsoever, but it doesn't matter. Holtz is burying this one in the back of the net, and we've tied this game up. Like, what a nice little pass there, and Holtz with not too much space. He's going to get it towards his backhand, and he's putting that pass Jacob Markstrom. But I just want to point out who sparked the offense there? Brandon Carlo. We should have known. So we have 12.9 seconds left. We have to win the face off. Whatever we do, do not lose the face off here. We got to win it. And that's not going to be good for us. We're going to be losing the face off. A shot thrown towards the net. I knew it. I knew it. I knew we had to win that face off right there. Something like that was bound to happen. I just knew it. Ain't no way. Joe Pavelski scoring the winner. You hate to see it. I mean, it's Joe Pavelski, so I'm happy it's Joe Pavelski of all players. But I knew it. The second we lost this draw, I knew we were going to allow a goal. Like, Holtz is literally right here. He's got to stop this shot from going towards the net. Joe Pavelski gets a stick on it. We also can't be losing this bout to Joe Pavelski. Why are we giving him the inside edge? I have absolutely no clue. But here he is right on the doorstep. We all saw that coming. If I could actually win faceoffs here, I think I'd be unbeatable. Hold on, William Eklund with a chance to tie it up. Okay, yeah, that's just stupid. Yeah, we win a faceoff and immediately tie it up five seconds later. All right, show William Eklund. I thought this game was over, but nope, we're forcing overtime. Yeah, William Eklund, that was the worst goal I've ever seen in my life, but you know what? We'll take it here. We're moving into overtime. The next goal wins. Play good defense. As long as we play good defense, we'll win this game. 
All right, Quentin Byfield's got past the defense. He's going to drop it back to Patrick Laine. What a shot from Patrick Laine. Oh my God, that was an absolute rocket. Right past Jacob Markstrom. What a nice drop back from Quentin Byfield though, but we're going to be winning this game right here. A game in which we should have lost. We're going to be winning in overtime. What an absolute rocket though. No, like real talk, that was an absolute rocket from Patrick Laine. A nice drop back by Quentin Byfield here. Laine, more than enough space. Boom, top shelf. He made Jacob Markstrom look like an absolute fool. Bro was in the right spot too. That shot was just too quick. Patrick Line, the OT winner, we're still alive in this series. So the boys are going to be staying alive here. Kakanyemi's picking up a goal in the first period. Can we keep the momentum going here? Yes, we can. At one point, we had a 4-0 lead. We got to close this game out. We got to close this game out. We can't be allowing this many goals. Matt Barzell, he's picking up a big OT winner. We're still alive. There is no reason this team shouldn't be down and out, but we've won three straight games, and now we're off to game seven. So here we go. A chance in game seven here. The Washington Capitals and New Jersey Devils exchanging goals in the first period. In the second period, we're going to be locking in. Are we really making a 3-0 series comeback yes we are we're making the biggest comeback in stanley cup history and we're off to the conference finals because yeah we haven't even made it there yet this was the second round so we made one of the biggest comebacks in playoff history to get to this point right here the conference finals yet again we have the tampa bay lightning to take on yet again and who are we going to see in the stanley cup final we all know it's going to be the edmonton oilers okay so we're absolutely dominating the tampa bay lightning right now we're going to close out in four games and move on to the stanley cup final to see the edmonton oilers i should have known but you know what i made the executive decision from here on out this is the face cam size we're going to be using this from here on out here and we're going to beat the edmonton oilers we have a 2-1 series lead we have to win game four game four is a must win for us we're not doing this again win game number five why are we always doing this all right here we go for the third year in a row the edmonton oilers taking on the washington capitals we're picking up a massive goal in the first period in the second period we're exchanging goals here we're just going to slowly simulate the period. I made a comment earlier about how I want to take risks and all that. Yeah, that's not happening right here. I have to know that we're going to win this game. So Patrick Liney's picked him a massive goal. There's only seven minutes left in the game. Make that six. I'm fully confident I can simulate the rest of the game. We have game seven between these two teams. So here we go. The biggest game in Washington Capitals franchise history. We're simulating the first period. Of course, McDavid's getting on the board first. When it comes to the second period, Voronkov's picking up a goal. But you know what? That's not going to be enough for us. We're exchanging goals here. I'm jumping into the third period. You already know I have to close this out for us. I have to allow us to win this Stanley Cup. Now I know for a fact I can score on the Edmonton Oilers. I've done it time and time again, and I've done it multiple times in one game. But the one thing I know the Edmonton Oilers can do, score early in the third period. So if we can lock them down here, we're going to be in a good spot. Bro, you got to be kidding me. Connor McDavid is scoring that goal right there. I thought I played that perfectly. I literally blocked the right side for Jake Ottinger to make sure that they couldn't somehow get that pass across. But nope, Jake Ottinger's not going to make that save. It went off our own player. It went off Mario Ferraro into the back of the net. You've got to be kidding me. But you know what? We got lots of time left. 18 minutes to score a couple goals here, and we're going to score one right now. Matt Barzell getting past Evan Bouchard. He's working his way towards the front of the net, but Stuart Skinner's making that save. Not for long, though. We're going to put the pressure on. Look Look at that man cook samuelson is working his way towards the front of the net and he has not given up the puck he's going to keep on working but Stuart skinner just keeps on making save after save here i'm not losing to Stuart skinner again so the boys drew a penalty here but you know what that doesn't mean we're going to need the penalty kill we might just score a quick goal right here and we're going to keep on working jamie alexiak driving to the front of the net but Stuart skinner is going to be able to make that stop i shouldn't even say that Stuart skinner made that stop he just broke up the play but we're going to tee that one right up and you know what it's going to deflect off somebody i think it might have hit Cody CC, San Jose Sharks legend. All right, Holtz, you're working your way towards the front of the net. Can you score on Stuart Skinner? Yes, you can. A nice little move, and now we've made this a one-goal game. So that was a big four-on-four -four goal right there. We're still alive in this game. I gotta remember, this is game seven. Like, I need to focus up here. This is game seven. Winner takes home the Stanley Cup. I can't be playing poor defense. So immediately after that, what am I doing? Giving up a great opportunity to the Edmonton Oilers, but we're gonna be making that stop. We're on the power play here. It's time for us to go to work. Nice little pass to William Eklund on the far side. He's gonna swing that around to Matt Barzell. He's going to try to deflect that off Stuart Skinner, but he's getting across in time. Was I trying to deflect off Stuart Skinner? Absolutely not, but you know what? It sort of worked. I think Matt Barzell's got himself a little break here. He's going to get by over to Quinton Byfield. No way we're not capitalizing. It also wasn't even Quinton Byfield. I don't even know who that was. So since this power play began, we've been putting on all the pressure. We just haven't been able to beat Stuart Skinner yet. And once again, he's going to be making a big time save. 
Jake Ottinger, you saved the day. What a big save from Jake Ottinger. I thought the game was over there, but he said no. So we're putting on some pretty good pressure right now. Koivlev's bringing the puck into the zone. He's going to drop it over. Holtz had a wide open net, but we couldn't get that pass across. But you know what? Holtz is never going to give up like that. He's going to keep on pushing. But hold on, who is that? The man, the myth, the legend, Brandon Carlo. He's bringing the puck into the offensive zone here, and he is not stopping. He's teeing this one up. Stuart Skinner, a big time save. What's Brandon Carlo doing in the offensive zone like that? Absolutely cooking. I have no clue. Shout out to Mario Ferraro, though. That man got absolutely rocked there. So we have 8-10 left in the game. It's a one goal game. Lots of time for us to get back into this one. We just need one shot. One shot gets us back into this game,�����������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������
making big moves and Lane Hudson, you're gonna be the next guy we bring to the team here. I said the defense was getting a massive upgrade and I wasn't kidding. Lundquist, immediately potential goaltender, second round pick's gonna be sent over. They're saying no to that one. You know what? I'm done with the nonsense here. A first round pick's gonna be included in this deal, but you're giving me something back. Like you're at least gonna give me a third and fourth round pick back, but I don't care. We are getting this deal done. They're gonna say no to that. Give me the third rounder at least. We're getting this deal done with the Montreal Canadiens and now the defense is looking spectacular. Kovalev, Kevin Korczynski, Brandon Carlo, Lane Hudson, Samuelson, you're going to stick around for this season, but you don't have too much time left here. And then we'll bring in a cheap defenseman for the third pairing. All right, so this is what we're going to do. Nick Haig, I'm going to sign you for a one-year deal at $6.5 million. This is way more than what you're asking for, but I want you to come to this team. That leaves us with give or take $10 million to work with, so we could sign one forward. So the one forward we're going to bring to the team here on a one-year deal at $7 million is going to be Daniel Sprong. He's an 86 overall, and I'm kind of hoping he can fit on our bottom six. So we do need a backup goaltender, and Primu, you can be that guy, especially if it's only going to cost a sixth round pick. I mean, two sixth round picks isn't the end of the world either. So yeah, here's two sixths, and we got Primu. So at the end of the day here, I don't care how good the team looks. Like, our team looks amazing here. The defense is spectacular. There are zero weaknesses on this team, but we all know for a fact we're going to somehow lose in the Stanley Cup final. It's happened three times in a row. Why wouldn't it happen this season? We're simulating right to the end of the year because I'm not making any moves at the deadline. This is a team I believe in here. We just have to show up in game seven of the Stanley Cup final. So I don't care about this. We're first in the entire league for the first time ever. The Edmonton Oilers, third in the entire league. That means absolutely nothing to me. Matt Barzell having 108 points, nothing. Patrick Line, 99, including 59 goals, nothing. All of this right here means absolutely nothing to me. Jake Ottinger posting the best numbers, it means nothing. The only thing that matters is in game seven of the Stanley Cup final, we come out on top. We have the Islanders in the first round, it's time to wake up. This is all that matters. All that matters is the postseason, and we got to lock in here. We have the Islanders in the first round. The last thing I want to be doing is losing in the first round here, but that's not going to happen. We have a 2-1 series lead. We're looking to win game number four here and take a commanding 3-1 series lead, but why would this team ever do that? We have a 3-2 lead here. Do not go to game seven. Whatever you do, don't go to game seven. We're off to the second round. So Edmonton's gained by St. Louis in the first round. We all saw that coming, but now we have our second toughest task because obviously the Edmonton Oilers are the toughest task the new york rangers we have to get by the new york rangers here they were the second best team in the entire league this is gonna be a tough matchup okay we have to beat the new york rangers here whatever you do beat the new york rangers things are not looking good what has happened to this team the washington capital is just a bunch of frauds right now you're kidding me right like i don't know what it is here the washington capitals and new york rangers washington has a 4-1 lead we got this game all wrapped up we're moving on to game six here we got to win three in a row now i know this team can make a 3-1 series comeback because we made a 3-0 series comeback we're down three nothing all right time to spark the greatest comeback of all time and we have to win this game more than any game before this game right here is more important than game seven of the stanley cup final last season you guys don't understand what happens if we win this game. If we win this game and somehow make it to the conference finals, we're almost guaranteed a Stanley Cup. So we got to lock in here. This has to be the best we have ever played. We can't have any faults here. We have to be perfect in every single aspect of the game. So Lane Hudson, it's time for you to spark our offense here. And it looks like you're wheeling and dealing through everyone here. We're throwing that towards the net. Shesterkin's making the save. We're going to cycle that around though. Quinton Byfield, you're a big time player. You make big time plays here. But that's not happening right now. All right, here we go. Quinton Byfield, can we throw it over to him he would have had a breakaway but he's not going to be there but it doesn't matter Eklund's getting the puck and that's going to be an easy tap in for Quinton Byfield it's a 3-1 game now we're sparking the comeback but William Eklund's absolutely picking that man's pocket it's going to be an easy 2-1-0 for us we were guaranteed that goal right there that was an easy one all right Quinton Byfield let's man the offense you're going to drop to Korchinski he's going to tee that one up there is a bunch of people in front of the net but Shesterkin's still going to find a way to find that puck that was a big block by Kovalev here. Hopefully we can spring the offense. And yes, we can. Kovalev's got a step on the defense. He's going to have a goal here. He's just got to lock in. And it's going off Shesterkin's pad into the back of the net. What a great play from the defense. The defense is leaning to offense here. And it's now a one goal game. We got the momentum and we're not giving it up. Look at Brandon Carlo breaking up that play right there. Let's give the puck to him and allow him to run the offense. He's got some jets and he's going to use them. Breaking towards the net. He's going to dish it off. Maverick Bork, how are you not scoring that goal? All right, Brandon Carlo. Maverick Bork screwed up that last play for you, but now it's time for you to cook again here. You're going coast to coast, manning the offense here. This man, Brandon Carlo, is a different beast. It doesn't matter who's on him. He's going to get past everyone. Looking up, cooking all the way towards the front of the net here. He's throwing that on net. A great opportunity. Yes, yeah, so you remember how we were cooking? Yeah, it's not really going our way anymore. Dimitri Orlov's picking up a big time goal here. The defense was lacking. 
Yeah, you hate to see it. That was Orlov's second goal of the postseason. Nine minutes left in this game. We got to pick up another two goals, but I know for a fact we can do that as we immediately turn the puck over. What a steal by Quinton Byfield. He's given us a great opportunity. Kevin Korczynski's going to tee that one up. That didn't happen. That really didn't just happen there. Matt Barzell, throw that on net. I don't really care what happens, but that didn't just happen. Hold on. We got to watch the replay. Kevin Korczynski, there is literally nothing you could have done there. You're going to tee up a perfect shot here. What's going to happen? It's going to get deflected out in front. We are basically guaranteed a goal here right off the post. Off Shesterkin's leg, wide of the net. This is stupid. Now this is just pain, sheer pain right now. We are not winning this game. Hold on, we have a chance. We have a chance here. 30 seconds left, we gotta score one more. Sprung had way too much space. He turned on the Jets there. This is straight pain right here. You know what makes it worse? The Edmonton Oilers lost in the second round. The Edmonton Oilers lost in the second round. If we get by the Rangers here, we win the Stanley Cup. Edmonton wasn't there to stop us anymore. So if Edmonton doesn't make the Stanley Cup final, near do the Washington Capitals. The Edmonton Oilers lost in five games to the Seattle Kraken. We would have won the Stanley Cup here, but nope, we're going to lose to the New York Rangers. Columbus wins the Stanley Cup. I don't care. This is the worst thing that could have happened to us. The Washington Capitals have not performed in the last couple games. I haven't performed for the Washington Capitals. It's just been a disaster here. And what makes it even worse here? Not a single good prospect. We had five picks to use here and still couldn't get a good prospect. I guess there is one good thing here. We're not losing anybody. I mean, we are losing a couple guys like Daniel Sprong is going to be leaving the team, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Nick Hegg's going to be leaving. Gustafson's going to be leaving, but that's fine. We can find replacements for those guys. We've got $12 million to work with, but this is tough. So there's going to be a couple expensive deals that we have to get done here. The first is going to be with Kevin Korczynski. It's going to be $8.8 .8 million for the next eight years. And honestly, for a star defenseman, I'm perfectly fine with that. Lane Hudson, I'm hoping you're asking for only $5 million. This is a bit expensive, but we're going to find a way to get it done. So how about we do $6.7 million for the next five years? I feel like that's a pretty fair Fair price for you as a second pairing defenseman. Cole Perfetti, we're going to write out your contract for this season. We're going for a Stanley Cup. We're going to need you here. So we have to sign two players here. The first is Dylan DeMello. He's going to be a good defensive defenseman for us. He's going to help us. And then we do need to sign one forward here. So the final player we're going to bring to the team here, Pavel Dorfia. You were here when we won a handful of Stanley Cups with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Maybe you're the missing piece. I think you were on the team. Maybe you weren't. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Pavel Dorfia, you're joining the team. So just let me win one. I don't know if it's been the bad gameplay. I don't know if it's just been the simulation doesn't want to see us win i don't know what it is but for some reason the washington capitals just can't win a stanley cup right now yes the gameplay hasn't been great we're not going to overlook that there has been multiple times i should have won the stanley cup and i should have showed up in the big time games and i didn't do so but you know what i've tried to keep us in the series day in and day out i'm always showing up to the rink but you know what the simulation just doesn't want us to see success this is it right here. No more mistakes. A 61, 15, and 6 record. One of the best offenses and one of the best defenses in the entire league. We might be the only team below three goals per game. Never mind. There is three teams here below three goals per game, and we're one of them. 2.55 allowed. Nobody can touch us right now. Matt Barzell continues to be that guy. 102 points. Quinton Byfield, 81. Patrick Line, 80. Look at all the elite scores here from top to bottom. Everyone can score. Goaltending, the otter was incredible. 50 wins, 10 shots, a 9. 25 and a 225 when we have to win this season no more disappointments it's been four years of disappointment we have the new york rangers in the first round it's time for this team to lock in no more excuses so we have a handful of things changing mid video the mic's looking a bit different right now the camera angle's looking a bit different but the one thing that's not different is the washington capitals choking in the stanley cup playoffs that's never going to change here no what are we doing what are we really doing here we're down 3-2 in the series the washington capitals are complete frauds right now this team's got to step up big time like we were a six 61 win team we're not losing in the first round we are not losing in the first round here we're down 3-1 entering the third period we have to be perfect in every single aspect of the game if we want to win this we can't allow a single goal we can't allow a single shot we have to be perfect so we have to be absolutely perfect here. If we want to win this game, no shots allowed, no lost face-offs, no nothing. We have to be absolutely perfect here. All right, we got to get something going pretty quick here. Holtz is behind the net. He's going to try to center it out to Line. What a pass to Patrick Line. He's going to bury that into the back of the net here. It's a one-goal game, but what a pass from Holtz. I don't know how he got past both defensemen right there. Like, bro is absolutely threading the needle to get that pass across, but Patrick Line, he was right there, and that's an easy goal for him. So we made this a one goal game, 16 minutes left in the period. We just got to keep the pressure on. So far, our defense has been immaculate and that's got to continue right here. And what a pass. We have a wide open net, but Velarde can't finish. Honestly, I have no clue how that pass got across. I was not prepared. 
But here we go. Carlos springing a break up to Velarde. Velarde's getting past the defenseman. And just like that, this game is tied. Never mind. I spoke too soon. So Velarde's going to be drawing a massive penalty here. That's huge for us. We're off to the power play. We got to capitalize on this power play if we want to win the game. So it's time for the boys to go to work here. Kevin Korczynski bringing the puck into the offensive zone. Nobody's going to pick him up, so he's got to rip that shot. We're bringing it back. Velarde's going to tee one up here. Shesterkin, a massive save. Voronkov send that puck around. We're giving it back to Velarde. We're going to center it out in front here. It's a loose puck. Shesterkin's going to be able to grab it. 18 seconds left on the full pressure meter. We have to win the faceoff here. We got to send the big time players out here. We need someone that can win a faceoff. So Matt Barzell, you've won a ton of big time faceoffs. I need you to win one right here. If we can win this faceoff, we're going to be in a great spot. Kevin Korczynski tee that up. Shesterkin's making the big save here. So just like that, with the full pressure meter, Matt Barzell is going to dial in for us. He's going to even this game up. We have a tie game. Lots of time left here. Lots of time left for three more goals. Also, someone's calling me ignore so we have a lot of time left in this game but you know what that's a lot of time for the new york rangers to score and we can't allow that to happen that was a big time shot matt barzell is getting the rebound we're going to cycle it around to our defenseman koivlev is going to lose the puck here but we're going to be drawing another tripping penalty we're back on the power play once again so back-to-back -back power plays is huge here if we can score back-to-back -back power play goals then we're going to be in control of this game three unanswered is going to give us all the momentum and that's exactly what we want so holtz is going to bring the puck into the zone no he isn't he's dropping it off to Voronkov, who's splitting through the deep defense here he's gonna have an opportunity but it's not gonna be good enough we're sending it back to Holtz he's teeing one up Voronkov's gonna shoot the rebound there hey Shostrykin's gonna have to freeze the puck if we can win the face off it's gonna be big all right Lane Hudson you're absolutely flying you know what I want you to take this puck up never mind Velarde's way up there in the zone he's bringing the puck in here we got to find a trailing man that's exactly who we found Kaki Yemi. I was trying to get that pass across not gonna lie there was a man on the doorstep for us and that would have been an easy goal okay Patrick Line this is a guaranteed goal for you maybe not Shostrykin a huge save i thought with the full pressure meter that was a guaranteed goal but hold on we're giving up a breakaway here william eklund's getting back in time but he's picking up a penalty here charging for william eklund you know what i'll take that Look at Brandon Carlo, a great play there. He's going to spring it to Velarde. Velarde, a nice little spin move. He's going to rip this towards the net. Shesterkin's making the save. Samuelson's going to pick up the loose puck here. We're going to keep on that pressure. And hey, this is moves on the penalty kill right here. We're making big time moves here. You love to see it. What a play by Lane Hudson. Able to read that right there. Now we're going to break this out. We're going to find Pavel Dorfe. He's on a breakaway, but he's tired. He's still getting the shot off. And Frank Nazar is going to be right there for the rebound. A big time play from our third line. Third line or fourth line? I don't know who it was. All I know is we scored a massive goal here. We have the lead in the game. We just got to hold on now. And look at Frank Nazar putting the pressure on Mario Ferraro. He's got a breakaway. He's going to the backhand, and he's going to pick up his second of the game here. We have a two-goal lead, five minutes left in the game. The Washington Capitals are creating one of the biggest comebacks of all time. I mean, what am I talking about? This is not one of the biggest comebacks of all time, but I'm still going to gas the boys up. And Patrick Laine, you could be that guy for us, ringing it right off the crossbar. You had a goal there, but Shesterkin, maybe he made the save there. I don't know. I thought Patrick Laine rung it off the crossbar, but Shesterkin might have got his glove on it. So it's deep. Defense, defense, defense. We all know this right now. Matt Barzell is putting on the pressure. He's trying to create a turnover in the defensive zone, but it looks like the Rangers are going to break this out. Koivalev, I need you to make a big time play here, but it looks like it's going to be Kevin Korczynski as I overskated. We're going to break it out to Matt Barzell. This is another insurance goal, and he's going to capitalize. What is that? Five unanswered goals here? Four or five unanswered. We've been locked in in this game. But this is what I mean. You see games like this where you're like, wow, stick on the ice knows what he's doing. He looks like a pretty good player. And then you'll see games where I'm just absolute crap. But you know what? We're locked in right now. Nothing can stop the Washington Capitals except the simulation. Because the simulation might ruin us. But hold on. Here goes William Eklund. Are we going to get another goal here? We had a great chance, but unfortunately we can't capitalize. I overskated. So in the final seconds of this one, we're going to secure a massive win here. But it's not over. The Washington Capitals haven't moved on yet. We've just survived another day. The simulation has to stand tall for us. And I don't really believe in that. No, like real talk, look at this. 29 shots, we scored five goals, but we really took 29 shots in the third period. Shesterkin was just making big save after big save. So our 61 win season comes down to the simulation right here. We're picking up four goals in the first period, another two in the second. We got this game locked down, nine goals. I think I sparked our offense. How many straight goals have we scored now? 14, 14 unanswered against the New York Rangers. Yeah, we're not losing anymore. So we made a big comeback against the New York Rangers in 
the first round. That definitely shouldn't have happened because we shouldn't have been down the series. 61 wins and a wild card team is putting the pressure on to us. That shouldn't happen. We're moving on to the second round. We have the Columbus Blue Jackets up next. Based on what happened in the first round, no team's going to be easy for us. 61 win season, by the way. The best team in the NHL by far. One of the best offenses. I believe we were second best in a defense that nobody could touch. Like we were the best defensive team by far. Swept to the Columbus Blue Jackets in the second round. You can't make this stuff up. Once I saw we were down 3-1, I didn't even bother jumping into game number four. I knew this series was over. We were not making that comeback. The simulation doesn't want us to win. There's a very good chance the Washington Capitals don't win a Stanley Cup here. Jake Ottinger, do I need to trade you? Because you've just not been that good. So another season's complete, another disappointing loss. I guess something's just never changed for the Washington Capitals. God forbid this team ever sees success. I'm sick of this. I never want to see this team ever win again. So we already have ourselves one Koiva level on the team, but why not bring a sec? This one's a mediumly potential goaltender starting at 61 overall. Maybe he can change something with this team. Who knows? But you know what? We don't have enough mediumly potential goaltenders, and this is going to be one we're securing with the 80th overall pick. He's actually a 63 overall, so maybe he's going to be the guy. Who knows? So we're going to lose a handful of pieces here. Cole Perfetti's gone. Dylan Timbello's gone. Pavel Dorfia, he is going to be gone. I signed a handful of these guys to two-way contracts. All of them are going to be leaving. Clark Caswell, I guess I can keep you around. Yeah, why not? 825k for two years. That's a good enough deal for you. If I can sign these guys to two-way contracts, I'll keep them on the team. But yeah, we're going to be losing some pieces. Primu, what are you looking for? We can do that. I mean, Cole Perfetti, this actually isn't the end of the world here. 3.6 million for the next two years. That's pretty close to what you were getting paid last season. Never mind, you're off to free agency. All right, so there's a lot of guys that need extensions here. We're going to start with Holtz. Hopefully, we can lock him down to a fair deal. I mean, this right here isn't too bad. 6.5 for the next four years. Velarde, I want to try to do something similar with you and what's it going to be almost identical to what you're getting paid right now we actually might save a couple dollars here we're going to do four million dollars for the next four so a four by four with velarity we're saving 500k right there cocking yemi we're going to have you walk here vronkov more than likely you're going to be walking as well yeah 3.5 million we're not doing that and samuelson i think i'll let you walk as well all right so i feel like this is a no-brainer our highly potential goaltender 72 overall at 23 years old two million dollars for the next eight seasons if he somehow lives up to the hype we're going to be trading the otter and he's going to be our guy all right so we need a new third pairing defenseman and andrew peak at this price tag it's not too bad it's gonna be 2.3 for the next three years that's gonna give us about three million dollars to bring in two more forwards but i think we're gonna make some trades so cock and yemi it just hasn't worked out here we have not been able to win with you being on the team it's not your fault but it just hasn't worked here so we're gonna pick up brindley we're gonna try to get one fourth round pick in this deal they're gonna say no to that so we're just gonna go one for one here by doing this move we're also freeing up a bit more money and then our second deal is gonna involve this high star potential goaltender i just drafted we're also gonna be including a fifth rounder as well to get Quentin Musty. He's going to be a good power forward for the bottom six here. I'll give you a seventh round pick as well, but it shouldn't be more than that. So this package is going to be sent over. San Jose is saying yes. Now win a Stanley Cup. Stop being frauds. Show up when it matters. All right, so we actually have to make one more move heading into next season because we need another sniper. So Clark Caswell on a second round picks off to Chicago. Parzak, I need you to play some bottom six minutes for us. So I've just completely given up with this team. We are good on paper. Like during the regular season, this team's going to finish as one of the best. Like we might even win 62 games this season but you know what's going to happen if we win 62 games we probably won't even get out of the first round we won 61 games last season and got swept in the second round still haven't gotten over that so we've been in this position a million times first in the entire league but we have one big difference here matt barzell was not that guy this season he's dropping to only 80 points as the fall off server matt barzell hopefully not we got to win a stanley cup here and he's got to be the guy to help us win one when it comes to goaltending jake andre is putting up amazing numbers once again here but the regular season numbers mean absolutely absolutely nothing we get a chance at getting revenge against the columbus blue jackets in the first round i want to sweep this team only allow one goal in the entire series i'll give them the first goal of the game in the first minute after that they don't score for the rest of the series we outscore them by nine goals in every single game we don't lose to this team again so the columbus blue jackets won 44 games this season we won 56 games we have to show up when it matters we're winning game number one here dropping game two we respond to game three though we have to win game number four here don't drop game number four. Thankfully, we have a 3-1 series lead, but that means nothing because I know this team will choke it away. If they have the opportunity to choke this away, they're going to choke it away. Game seven. So we got game seven, the Columbus Blue Jackets and Washington Capitals. Yes, we're cocking Yemi's picking up a goal in the first period. You hate to see it. Moving on to the second period, it's an absolute blowout. We're losing five to one. I'm jumping into this game. If I can win us game seven, that would be an absolute miracle here. The simulation is definitely not making that comeback for us. I probably won't make the comeback, but 
I can at least try. So the Washington Capitals have to score some quick goals here. We have to score basically five unanswered goals, and it's got to start right here. Matt Barzell moving into offensive zone. He's going to tuck that one past the goaltender. Okay. We're off to a great start. Matt Barzell, I have no clue how you tuck that one into the net, but we're definitely going to take it here. That's an early goal in the third period. We still have a chance. Like a four goal comeback seems like a lot, but it's a three goal comeback and we basically have the exact same amount of time here. We got to keep the pressure on though. And Matt Barzell, I'm going to give you that puck right back. We're going to bring it into the zone here. Quinn Byfield's got an opportunity to do something here. And you know what? I'm going to let him go for a bit of a skate with it. He's going to tee one up here. Matt Barzell's got the rebound. We're throwing a shot on net, but it looks like the goaltender's making the big save. I don't even know who the goaltender is. But is Quinton Byfield picking up a penalty? Ain't no way. They want us to lose. No way Quinton Byfield's getting a penalty for that. I'm assuming the goaltender's still Tarasov, but I have absolutely no clue. They could have made a trade. It could be Shesterkin for all I know. But yeah, Tarasov's been holding it down, but we got to get one past that man. So we got to break this puck out into the offensive zone here. Let's just try to waste a bunch of time. I don't want to have the Columbus Blue Jackets in the offensive zone here. So let's just waste time here and give ourselves an opportunity. And Brandon Carlo, a massive hit's going to lead to a bit of offense here. He's trying to spark something, bringing the puck into the offensive zone. He's going to circle back. Brandon Carlo, a great opportunity, but he's about 19 million feet wide of the net. So we've killed off the penalty and we've got something going here. Koivalev's going to throw a shot towards the net. Tarasov's making a big save. We're trying to keep the pressure on. We're going to tee one up here. He's going to make another big big save here but at least the penalty's over so Quinn Byfield you had a nice rest here it's time for you to go on a bit of a skate you're going to drop it over to Maverick Bork he's going to get by the defense here he's going to the backhand but it's not going to be enough can he go short side no he can't but Quinn Byfield's got the puck behind the net he's trying to cook up a bit of offense here we're going to send it over to Andrew Peak. he's going to tee one up a loose rebound but we can't capitalize on it so look at the pressure from Maverick Bork we got the full pressure meter maxed out he's going to miss the net he had a wide open tuck there but can't capitalize Samuelson is cooking he's wrapping around a wide open net and it looks like Maverick Bork's gonna be able to bury this one it's a 5-3 game now we're not down and out yet Maverick Bork picking up the big rebound there Samuelson's making massive plays he really started that one right there so here we go Brandon Carlo he's bringing the puck up here he's gonna send it over to Velarde Velarde's gonna try to swing it back who is that Lane Hudson he had such an elite opportunity right in the slot there but he just can't get this one past Taras off Bro, I don't even know how that happened. How was there three Columbus Blue Jackets players behind our defense? Like, how is this happening? Columbus player here. Columbus player here. Columbus player here. How is every single player behind our defense? How does that work? It was a 3-on-0. How did we put ourselves in that position? There is nothing I can do right there. Why is there three Columbus Blue Jackets players past our defense? We got nine minutes left in the game here. We have to score three unanswered goals. Things are just not going our way, but we're immediately picking the puck here. Velarde, take that shot. Holtz is getting the rebound. Maybe that was the right decision. We're throwing it to the net. It's Tristan Jari in between the pipes. All right, that's new news to me. So Tristan Jari being in between the pipes, does that change anything? Absolutely not. We're still going to be able to find the back of the net here. Matt Barzell, a bit of a cheesy goal, but you know what? We need a goal like that. We're going to be beating Tristan Jari here, our third goal of the third period, but we still need to score another two. We really have to score five goals in the third period just to make it to overtime. So six minutes left. That's a lot of time the way we've been scoring goals, but it is going to come down to the wire here. So Patrick Liney, he's wheeling between everyone, and he's going to get a great opportunity in the slot here, a one goal game. One one goal game, five minutes left. Washington might be able to steal this game away. Like this game should be tied right now. But for some reason, our defensemen forgot they were supposed to play defense. They didn't realize that was their job. And we allowed a stupid goal. But you know what? We're back in this game. It's a close one. It's going to go down to the wire. We got to play some great defense here. Maverick Bork, turn on the Jets here. Can you tuck one past Tristan Jari? Unfortunately, it's going to be broken up. So Patrick Line, maybe you have to be the guy to send us the OT here. You got to be the overtime hero. We just can't create any space right now. Even if we move the puck, that's not going to do too much. Quentin Byfield, maybe you have a chance here. You're going to rip that towards the net. 30 seconds left. Patrick line he's going to try to go short side it's not going to be enough here we're going to the backhand we're going to tuck that in the back of the net what is going on i mean to be fair that was definitely goaltender interference i could not tell you what just happened there but yeah hold on maybe not chinikov did kind of push us into tristan jari there i'm not gonna lie i think we got body checked into tristan jari but i don't think the ref's gonna see it our way 
Like, to be fair, Chinikov threw us right into Tristan Jari there. I feel like we should be getting that goal. But nope, the game is going to say that was goaltender interference. I don't know what they're yapping about. I think that was a clean goal. I think we're just getting screwed here. So with four seconds left in the game, there's just not enough time here. One last shot. Holtz is going to tee one up, but Tristan Jari is going to make one final save here. We lost in the first round. Like, I have no clue what to say here. We got screwed because for some reason, our AI defenseman decided to pinch there. We outshot them 20 to 12. I mean, 12 shots is quite a lot here. Like, we weren't great defensively. But we took 20 shots, scored four goals. But I just have nothing to say. Why did our defenseman pinch? I haven't gotten over that. The fact that our defenseman pinched in the neutral zone in a crucial moment of the game. Like, what are they thinking? So just like that, another first round loss for the Washington Capitals. I tried to spark a massive comeback. It just wasn't enough for dropping that one 6-5. to five, But there's nothing else I could have done in that game. Chicago Blackhawks are Stanley Cup champions here. But I just don't know what we're going to do from here on out. How are we going to make this team good enough to be Stanley Cup champions? All right, so I guess you could say we're off to a decent start in the draft here. A lowly potential player in the first round who's already a 64 overall. That really doesn't mean nothing. We haven't won a single Stanley Cup. We have four more years left, and we haven't won a single Stanley Cup here. But hey, we're getting a medium lead potential player here. I'll definitely take it. 52 overall, you're going to be a good trade asset. Because yeah, without a doubt, I'm trading you. All right, so we're going to lose all these pieces right here. That's perfectly fine, though. We're going to make some moves in free agency. And one of those moves might be trading Matt Barzell. 33 years old, he's going to start declining here. He's looking for a contract extension. Patrick Line, we might trade you as well. All right, so Barzell and Line, both of you guys are probably going to be leaving the team here. Gavin Brindley, Parasak, Quentin Musty. Ideally, I can keep all of you guys around here. We're going to start with Gavin Brindley, and this is going to be a great deal. 2.7 million for the next three years. Parasak, you're probably going to be around that same price range. Yikes, maybe not. You won't be coming back to the team. Quentin Musty, we can do this, but let's do multiple years here. We'll do a three-year deal at 2.7 million. So Quentin Musty and Brindley are going to be sticking around. Parasak, we're probably just going to ride out your contract so Matt Barzell you were a key piece for the Washington Capitals but we just couldn't win with you I don't know why we couldn't win with you but we couldn't so I'm going to trade you here you're off to the Montreal Canadiens Michael Meese is going to be brought in here it's honestly devastating that Barzell has to be traded here but something has to change you were literally willing to say yes three seconds ago and now you're saying no i will give you a third round pick just to accept this deal i will give you two third round picks just to accept this deal you know what we're actually not doing that michael misa you will be coming to the team here but what does montreal actually want here like do they want defensemen yes they do matt barzell you're being traded for a defenseman hopefully the philadelphia flyers have an elite defenseman i can trade for here rasmus anderson i guess you're gonna be that guy can we go one for one here hopefully we can they're gonna be saying no this is ridiculous. So maybe Matt Barzell and a third round pick will be enough for Rasmus Anderson. They're saying that's a little bit low. I'll throw a seventh rounder in the deal. So there you go. Here's a seventh rounder as well. Rasmus Anderson, welcome to the Montreal Canadiens because that's where you're being flipped to. Now, Rasmus Anderson, you fit their trade block. You are exactly what they want here. Yes, your contract is very similar to Matt Barzell's, but that doesn't matter. Apparently, they have money now ridiculous so philly i guess we're actually gonna make multiple deals with you because now we're gonna bring joe ginlet to the team here we need a new sniper patrick line is starting to age out here he's 32 years old i didn't realize philly had joe again on their team earlier so i would have just done one trade but i guess we're gonna be doing two separate ones and then joe again you are the greatest player of all time we're locking you down to an incredible deal here it's gonna be 3.4 million for the next five you know what this is such a great deal i'll give you exactly what you're looking for but yeah, you should fire your agent. And because we have so much money, Parzak, do I actually bring you back to the team here? We're going to hold off on that extension though, because I don't want to give you more than Joe Ginla, especially if he's on the first line and you're on the fourth. All right, so this mediumly potential player we drafted isn't going to develop in time. So I'm going to trade him along with a second round pick. We're going to get Hart from the Minnesota Wild, 85 overall. He's going to be a great defenseman for us. Hopefully he's going to help us win a Stanley Cup. Because right now things aren't looking good. Like, I don't know what it is about this team, but we are just not succeeding in any aspect of the game right now. We keep getting knocked down the first round. I don't care anymore. Here's a first round pick. I'll give up a first round pick. We're going to get heart in this deal. You guys are wiling. Like, I'm really having to give up a first and second round pick as well as a mediumly potential prospect. Ridiculous. All right, so Dylan Holloway, a St. Louis Blues legend. He's officially on the St. Louis Blues now. Same with Phil Broberg. Absolutely finesse the Edmonton Oilers. But now we're going to finesse the league here. It's a one-year deal. He's going to play some bottom six minutes. Please win a Stanley Cup. No more choking. No more constant disappointments win. So Michael Misa, Joe again, you guys are the two main additions over the offseason. We did bring in one defenseman. We got Hart here. He's going to play some second pairing minutes for us, but this is a really good team right here. We have an amazing goaltender. So what's going to happen? Well, obviously we're going to lose in the first round. Why would anything else happen? 
So with the loss of Matt Barzell and Patrick Lyonet, we're going to be dropping to third in the entire league here. Even though we have a better defense, like our defense is all 80 overalls and above. Like it might be almost all 85 overalls and above. Like our defense is elite right now, but yet we're allowing three goals per game. This game just confuses me. Quinton Byfield, 81 points here. Michael Mies is 78. Okay, our offense is terrible now. Look at the plus minuses. I guess Matt Barzell and Patrick Line meant that much to this team. Jake Ottinger, definitely not a season I was looking for here. Nine shutouts isn't bad though. But these numbers, definitely not what I'm looking for when it comes to the postseason. Since we're not first in the entire league here, we're not going to get the privilege of taking on a wild card team, but instead we're going to have to take on the Philadelphia Flyers who basically had an identical record to us. Like really the main difference between these two teams is overtime losses. We lost a lot more games in OT. We're going to be losing game number one. We're going to lose game number two here. We're not going down 3-1, are we? We have to win game number four here. That's exactly what we're doing. We've got the offense rolling now. It's got to keep on rolling here. Can we move into game six and actually close it out here? Yes, we can. We won four straight games. We got to keep this momentum going. This team rarely gets any momentum. So when we have momentum like this, we got to keep on moving. We're going to have a 2-1 series lead after three games here. Can we make it a 3-1 series lead? Of course not. We have to allow seven goals in game number four here. And then in game number five, we have to drop that one in overtime should have seen that coming so i'm going to make a prediction right now we're down by three goals entering the third period maybe not we actually have a 3-1 lead here and it looks like we're going to be closing it out five to two and we're off to game seven so here we go game seven the new york rangers taking on the washington capitals a scoreless first period moving into the second we have a 2-0 lead after the second period so it was an absolute dominant performance in game seven four straight goals from the washington capitals the rangers couldn't even compete with us and we're off to the conference finals so we just got past the new york rangers probably shouldn't have happened but you know what we're going to take it and now we have to take on the buffalo sabers we split the series so far so it's the best of three moving on here we're going to be winning game number five here close it out in game six move on to the stanley cup final it's actually going to happen the washington capitals have a chance at a stanley cup we have to take on the other team in alberta the calgary flames thankfully it's not the edmonton oilers is this team showing up when it matters yes we are we have a 2-1 series lead win game number four whatever you do win game number four here why would we ever win game number four we're not losing back-to-back -back games though close it out in game six i don't want to go to game seven why are we doing this i swear if i have to jump into game seven because this team is losing i'm gonna lose my mind just win win when it matters most we're giving up the first goal of the game in the second period it's gonna be a scoreless one i'm gonna slowly simulate the third period here if i have to jump into this game i will michael meese is gonna be picking up a massive goal here we're just approaching the halfway point in the third period we got nine minutes left here eight seven six five i'm starting to get a bit concerned if calgary scores here we're not gonna have too much time to respond if we're going to overtime though i'm jumping into this game i'm winning this game in ot I don't trust the simulation. I've watched the simulation screw us on 9 million different occasions. That's not happening today. We have a chance at winning a Stanley Cup. We need to score one goal here. I can do that. One goal wins us the Stanley Cup. Great defense and one goal is going to bring home the Stanley Cup for the Washington Capitals. After years and years of disappointment, we are one goal away. There we go. We are breakaway. Joe Aginla, you have a chance to win the Stanley Cup and you're not going to be able to do it. Dustin Wolf's keeping that out of the back the net you hate to see it so we've been putting all types of pressure on the calgary flame so far and velarde has got himself a breakaway he can end it here and is he going to be able to no dustin wolf is making the save once again here he is single-handedly keeping this team in this game but why am i choking on all these breakaways so frank nazar i guess it's your turn to somehow get a breakaway here you're driving into the zone you're going to throw it in front of the net and who is it gavin brindley the stanley cup winner who would have thought Gavin Brindley would be our Stanley Cup winner? The Washington Capitals have finally done it. After years and years of constant disappointment, losing to the Edmonton Oilers in three straight years to start off this video, here we are finally Stanley Cup champions. It took a long time to get here. Now, shout out to Alexander Holtz. He's going to be our Conn Smythe winner here. Eight goals, 16 assists, 24 points. The Washington Capitals have finally done it. I know for a fact the simulation wouldn't have done this for us. The simulation would have somehow screwed this up and we would have lost. So we finally get to hoist the Stanley Cup here. And who is it going to be? It's going to be Velarde. He's going to be the captain of this team. The first man to touch the Stanley Cup here. I mean, it probably should be Quentin Byfield, but you know what? The CPU handled the captains. I don't really care. We're finally Stanley Cup champions, and that's all that matters. Like, I really didn't think we would see this day, but we're finally Stanley Cup champions. Byfield, Holtz, Michael Misa, Lane Hudson, William Eklund, they were amazing. The goaltending wasn't even spectacular. 
a 908 and a 262 is good. Like, don't get me wrong. These aren't bad numbers. But Jake Andre, I've seen you put up better numbers before. Actually, I take that back. Not really. Like, you've had some great seasons with the team. Don't get me wrong. But these last couple postseason runs, you have been very bad. Like, this three-year stretch right here, like, broken, stop the puck to save his life. Unfortunately, though, one Stanley Cup is enough for me. I don't want two. I don't want three. Four Stanley Cups in the final four years. We already won one, so we have to win three more in the next three. So it was a historic day. The boys won a Stanley Cup, and because we want a Stanley Cup, everyone's sticking around here. Dylan Holloway, here's 3.1 million for one season. Parzak, I don't care what you asked for. How much are you looking for? 2.4 million. How about we do a three-year deal at 2.7 million? That's basically what we're paying everyone else on the third line. So we're going to be keeping the important pieces around here, and we're going back to back. Primu, you're actually going to be the only guy walking here because we do have that highly potential goaltender, and he's ready to jump into the lineup. So we have another chance to run it back here, but unfortunately, we are going to lose some important pieces. Carlo's not going to return to the team next season. He's 34 years old but he has one good year left in him and I want to go back to back with him. Hart, I'm actually really contemplating locking this guy down long term here because 7.4 million is not really that bad. We could probably get him for 6.7 million. Actually, I'll make that 6.8. 6.8 for the next six seasons. That's a pretty good deal even if you only play second pair minutes. Now we do have 11.8 million dollars so we could sign one free agent here. Now who is that going to be? I'm not really too sure yet. If I can find some star I can bring to the team, like technically we could make a trade, free up enough money and then bring Nathan McKinnon to the team and that might be the move. So we're making a very tough decision here, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like it. Gavin Brindley, the man that scored the OT winner in Game 7 to allow us to win our first Stanley Cup, is now off to the Boston Bruins. We're getting a third-round pick here, and we're making that signing because now we got enough money for him. I'm giving him as much as I possibly can here. It's going to be $13.7 for Nathan McKinnon. So we finally won a Stanley Cup here after years of disappointment. Nathan McKinnon got brought to the team. I don't care if he's 36 years old. He's got some good years left in him. This forward core is looking spectacular. The defense has never looked this good look at that left side that's going to be unstoppable and then when it comes to goaltending jake ottinger you drop to an 87 this is more than likely your final season then our backup goalie is going to step in here he's only an 82 overall at 25 years old but you know what he's finally going to get some nhl minutes he'll probably get up to like an 85 by the beginning of next season so maybe we're better off if we don't finish first in the entire league we're going to finish fourth this season which makes absolutely no sense considering we brought nathan mckinnon to the team and nathan mckinnon he sucked with us 85 points we are talking about nathan mckinnon yes he's 36 years old but he still has franchise potential and he's still 94 overall 85 points we're really doing that michael misa 46 points granted he was playing third line minutes for us this season so i can't really expect too much jake onger fell off a massive cliff here he's lost a majority of his x factors 86 overall it's his final season as our goaltender alexi's gonna be taking over next season ideally he's up to an 85 overall but jake ottinger this is your last chance at another stanley cup we got to go back to back here we have the islanders in the first round there's a lot of really good teams in the league but you know what washington's on a bit of a roll right now to be fair though i've also seen this team go on multiple roles and every single time it's led to us losing in the Stanley Cup final. So maybe I don't want us rolling. So far, we split the series with the Islanders. Game five is going to be a big one. And in that game, we're going to be scoring five goals. Can we close out in game number six here? Yes, we can. Nine goals is going to be more than enough. We got motion right now. Let's continue that motion. We're moving on to the second round. Where we're going to see the Philadelphia Flyers. I'm simulating four games. That's how confident I feel in us. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a sweep here. And we've actually dropped back to back games here. Let's not make it three straight. We got to win game number five here. All right, we're off to game six elimination. So we got game six elimination and we got to get back here we have a one goal lead entering the third period i believe in the washington capitals watch us win this game that is so incredibly tough not only did we lose that game three unanswered that really happened i don't want to see any of the scoring jake ottinger you're about to be traded nathan mckinn you're probably not coming back here unless we do a sign and trade i have never seen something backfire so poorly before so over these next two years we're locking in it's going to be the same team for both years we got a mediumly potential goaltender he's going to be a great trade asset because i can tell you right now that man's going to be traded when it comes to our seventh round pick here i really don't care what we get we're going to try to get a medium top six potential player we got medium bottom six we can live with that so we're going to be losing a couple pieces here brandon carlo is going to be leaving the team a washington capital great he's going to be missed here don't haul away if I can keep you around for 2.9 million, I'll do so. It looks like he's willing to accept that deal, so don't haul away. You're going to be sticking around. Everyone else, though, they're all going to be walking. So the only guy that needs a big extension right now is going to be Quinton Byfield. And I don't care what he asked for. He's going to be getting it. Psych, here's $10.7 million for the next seven years. A bit less than what you're asking for. When it comes to goaltending, Jake Andrews back up to an 88 overall. Okay, that makes zero sense. 
But you know what? We're still going to trade you. But we're actually going to have to trade you for a different goaltender because the one that had high elite potential now has high start potential. Bro didn't live up to the hype. Now, this is going to be a huge trade here. The Otter, two prospects in a first round pick over to the Vegas Golden Knights. We get Jacobson. He's going to be our goaltender. A6 overall. He's got an X factor. He's going to get better over the next two years. We will have to give him an extension, but I know we can handle it. Ted McGillis is also going to be joining the team here in 86 overall. He's going to be a great sniper for us. I don't think this is going to be enough. I don't want to do two first round picks, but I'm prepared to do so i'm going to try to do a first and second rounder because that might be enough here but it looks like it's gonna to have to be two first rounders so two first round picks can be given up here but if i'm given two first rounders you got to give me at least two thirds so we're gonna send that package over the vegas school knights are saying yes but we're not done yet. So of course we have to give Jacobson an extension here and he only wants a one year deal, but it's actually perfectly fine with me because we only have two years left here. So I'll give you 7.6 million for one year. That means you're locked down for this season and next season. And those are the final two years of the rebuild. So it actually works out for us. So I want to try to find two fairly cheap defense we can bring to the team here. I'm going to give this guy 3.9 million for the next two years. And then whoever I can find that's going to fill in the third pairing, that's who's also going to be brought to the team. This guy fits on all defensive pairings. Welcome to the team. So 2.8 million for the next two years. This team's ready to win some Stanley Cups. I mean, I've been saying that for the past like decade now, and we have not been winning Stanley Cups. So what do I know? So this team you see right here is the team we're going to rock for the next two years. Velarde, I'm really contemplating moving you down to the third line here, because then we get a plus five boost here. You know what? I don't really care if there's not a playmaker alongside a power forward and a sniper. Things have not worked so far. So we clearly have to change things up here. Kevin Korczynski, you're going to play on the second pairing this time. I just really don't know what to do anymore. Like we are in such a tough spot. This team for some reason can't see any success. I don't expect things to change this season, but we might as well just hope for the best. So the Columbus Blue Jackets just offered me this deal. And I'm going to be honest, we're desperate. A 6-5-1 record to start the season. If we can fit David Jircheck on this team for the next two years, I'll definitely do this. So we're going to be rocking the exact same team for the next two years. And with the addition of David Jircheck, I don't see anyone stopping us. You might not see our team in the top eight here. But you know what the stupid part is? We won our division. We won our division finishing ninth in the entire league here, and we get to take on the sixth seeded Florida Panthers in the first round because they're a wild card team. Now, why are they a wild card team? Because the entire Atlantic Division finished ahead of us. Every single team in the Atlantic Division was better than the Washington Capitals, and we won our division. Michael Misa, 94 points here. Quinton Byfield, 17. Holtz, you weren't bad, but William Eklund, how are you minus five? That shouldn't be happening here. The goaltending was abysmal. I just don't know with this team anymore. I really don't we have two more years to win two more stanley cups the florida panthers are up first we better make a statement but you know what we've made enough statements in this video this team has just not showed up in the big time games and i feel like that's just not going to change here so here we go against the florida panthers dropping game number one game number two and game number three here you know what we're simulating game number four if we get swept we get swept but it looks like we're going to be staying alive here can we stay alive in game number five if we can stay alive in game number five we'll jump into game six i'll see you at the beginning of next season i'm done with this nonsense so here we go with the final season. This is one of the best teams we've ever had, no question about it. From top to bottom, we are great. Defensively, we are great. Goaltending wise, that's my only concern. We have an 84 and an 83 here. Jacobson did not live up to the hype. He still has medium league potential, but he is not that guy. Can we win with Jacobson in between the pipes? I'm not too sure. But you know what? We couldn't win with the Otter. We couldn't win with Matt Barzell. We couldn't win with Patrick Laine. There's not very many players we can actually win with. So it's the final year. The Washington Capitals first in the entire league once again. A 53-24-5 record. One of the best offenses with one of the best defenses. But as we know, we've seen regular season success a million times in this video. Like We've seen regular season success almost every single year. The playoffs are where things get sketchy. Jacobson, 42 wins, 2 shots, and 9-10. 280 you were great for us this season but i need you to be great for 16 wins we need 16 wins here we have the boston bruins in the first round everyone has to be perfect and it's not even like every single player has to be perfect for us to go 16 and 0 we just need everyone to be perfect so we can win the stanley cup we're dropping game number one responding in game two luckily we won back-to-back -back games there as long as we take a 3-1 series lead i think we're gonna be in a great spot but why would we ever do that when game number five here this is getting ridiculous this is honestly ridiculous so here we we go the Washington Capitals taking on the Boston Bruins Washington's picking up three goals in the first period it's a one goal game entering the third period do I jump into this one you know what I'm gonna trust the AI here it's gonna hold it down for us why would I ever believe in this game I'm jumping into this game right here we have to win against the Boston Bruins we're not losing this is stupid you can't land hits anymore I guess boarding that was boarding so what am i supposed to do in this situation tell me what i'm supposed to do just not hit him 
This is stupid. So we got to kill off a penalty now because I body checked Jordan Cairo, and apparently that's a penalty nowadays. It's getting ridiculous out here. It was a good video. See you guys.